Hi, this is Philip from Zini, and today I'm going to be giving you an introduction to an instrument called uh, duduk. And while you may not have heard of that name before, if you've ever watched a movie or played a video game that has at least some scene or sequence that takes place in the desert or in the Middle East, then you have certainly heard this instrument in your life. Uh, it is a very characteristic sound and one that is very popular among uh, movie composers and in uh, what we sometimes call world music. It's an Armenian instrument originally, uh, at least according to most people it's considered to have originated in Armenia. There are variants of the instruments in uh, other uh, parts of that region. There is uh, an instrument in Azerbaijan that's often known as a balaban. And in Turkey, there is an instrument called the May, which is also rather similar. But at least this version, uh, most people agree or consider to be originally from Armenia. It is an instrument that is very highly revered and, and respected uh, and considered almost like a national instrument to the Armenians. The instrument is thought to be very old. Some even say it's thousands of years old, or two, three thousand. Others say it's about 1500. Difficult to know, but for sure it's a very old instrument instrument. It's made uh, primarily of uh, apricot wood um, and it's, it's, a, it's a wind instrument. It's a double reeded wind, wind instrument. A very common way to play this instrument traditionally in Armenian culture, uh, in Armenian music culture, is that one person, there are two players, one plays a drone note and the other will play melodies over that drone. And today, of course, the instrument is used in various different uh, ways than that. Uh, there are duduk music uh, that's mixed with uh, rock music, with the pop, and, and in the world music scene. It's basically everywhere. There are some very famous duduk players in the world. For example, Jivan Gasparian, who, among other things, plays on the soundtrack to the movie Gladiator. There is also Yevor Dagbagian, there is Levon Minasian, a bunch of different people. Now I first heard the instrument on the soundtrack to the movie The Last Temptation of Christ, which is a soundtrack made by Peter Gabriel. Now as I mentioned, this is a uh, woodwind instrument. Uh, it is made from apricot wood and it's a, uh, a double reeded instrument. So there are two main parts to this uh, situation. The first part is of course the body of the instrument itself made of apricot wood. Um, it is the sort of the flute section, even though it's not a flute, it's where the breath travels and creates uh, the sounds, the different notes. There are nine holes, finger holes, eight on the top and then one here on the bottom where the thumb is placed like this. Um, and you, of course, blow into the reed. Now, this reed is, uh, as you can see, it's a very large reed. It is unusually large in proportion to the body for this kind of instrument. It's a double reed um, that you place uh, at the top here. And then this is like a tuning uh, mechanism. So you use this to, to... So if you can see the opening here, the opening hole um, determines uh, the sounds or the, 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 the tuning, so to speak. And so you adjust uh, this little peg here uh, to get uh, the instrument to be actually in tune. And that sometimes needs to be adjusted because the hole will open when it's moisturized. Uh, a very common technique used to play this instrument is what's known as circular breathing, which is also a technique used uh, by playing other instruments like the didgeridoo or the flute, especially when, when doing the long uh, drone note that's played underneath the melody. Um, that often requires circular breathing. And what, what, what the player does is that he gathers air into his cheeks, like that, and then uh, once he's out of breath, he uses the breath in the cheeks while he inhales through his mouth. So he blows out with his mouth and in with his nose and thus it creates like a circular motion of breath that, that, so you can keep the note going for, well, uh, ideally forever, but that of course is impossible. Now as with many other instruments like this, the, uh, there are different sizes and the sizes of course determine the tuning. And so there are uh, any kind of variation on this. The probably most uh, common variant, of course, this varies by region and time and place, but uh, we could say today one of the most common, at least, is uh, w the one that's tuned in A. So it's in, uh, like this one. This is an A. And another very common one is uh, in B flat. 
Now the sound of the duduk is, as I said, very characteristic. It has a very warm, kind of uh, mystical, organic sound that's very useful when trying to evoke kind of a desert environment or uh, sort of a mysterious uh, atmosphere in movies. Um, and I think if I pl just play a few notes, you're going to immediately recognize the sound. Uh, let me just tune it first. So. Now the range of the duduk is usually about one octave in length, a bit more than one octave. Um, and the scale that's played, if, ju if you just use the, uh, the holes, the scale of the duduk is as such, from one octave to the other. So as you could tell, that was kind of a major scale, except for the seventh note which was a bit flat and actually in a kind of uh, microtone, a quarter note. Uh, of course, something that's very common in music from the Middle East and Anatolia and this region. Um, and so I think that's where that comes from, uh, of that the major scale or the, the sort of equivalent scale is not exactly the same as in Western music theory. Now you can, of course, adjust this um, by... Um, sort of moving your mouth or adjusting your breath to actually make it a proper Western major scale like this. Ish. Now different duduks have different sounds, of course, not just depending on the different tunings, also depending on who made them, what you know, the worksmanship behind it, the reed that's played. So what I just played was on a, a, a B flat duduk. Now I'll sort of compare this, for example, to a duduk that's in, in B. <laughs> So the technique for playing the duduk is, uh, looks very silly, of course. A lot of people tell me that I look like a hamster when I play it, because uh, air, or sort of air is, is, is kept in the cheeks, and the vibrato is, is achieved by moving your entire jaw, basically, up and down, like this. Now, you could do it in some other way, like... But that doesn't give you the same warm uh, tone. But of course, it's not just the body of the instrument, the, the tube, so to speak, that uh, affects the sound. Uh, the reed is incredibly important. The, the quality of the reed makes a huge difference. And there are also different uh, variations of the reeds. Um, there are soft reeds. There are sort of, you could say, they're soft, medium, and hard. Um, and uh, the soft ones are the easiest to play, and while the hard ones obviously are hardest to play, but they also create different sounds. The hard reeds often are a lot softer and warmer in their sound, while the uh, softer ones are much harder and sort of uh, pointy. Um, that is not to say that the soft reed sounds worse, it's just a different sound. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve and what kind of music you're trying to make. So for a, for a film soundtrack um, or something where you're trying to create a very warm atmosphere, a mystical atmosphere, the hard reeds are very convenient. Whereas if you're playing uh, during a wedding, for example, then you'll probably use a soft reed to get that uh, sort of high-pitched, uh, almost buzzing sound. And I have some, some softer reeds here, so I can try to give you uh, a demonstration. So this is what I played before. This isn't exactly a hard reed, it's more in the medium size, I think, uh, but it has uh, this sound. <laughs> I 
if I change to the softer reed, the softer reed is bigger, it's a lot easier to play, and it has a much uh, different sound. <laughs> buzzing sound. Uh, it almost sounds uh, more similar to an instrument like the zorna, uh, which is also a Middle Eastern instrument. Much more convenient for playing outside or playing uh, at a festive occasion like a, like a wedding. I've always loved the sound of the duduk and I've been listening to Jivan Gasparian and uh, all of these people throughout the years. Um, it was one of those situations where uh, you really love the sound of an instrument, but you don't actually know the name of the instrument, what it is. So eventually I had to look it up, uh, and because I loved it so much, I wanted to be able to play it myself. Now I've been playing this instrument on and off for about seven years, so uh, by no means am I a professional or a, a master. I st still consider myself a beginner and a, a student, a uh, self-taught student of this instrument, but it is an instrument that I uh, love and an instrument that I use a lot in my music, especially with Zini. We do have a new song, a new single coming out with Zini called Fulahi, which will be out on October 25th this year. Uh, and this song, like many of our other songs, uses the duduk. It's one of the, probably one of the most prominent instruments used on that song. Uh, and that song will be out on Spotify and iTunes and all this. Uh, so I thought I'd shamelessly plug it in this video. As I mentioned before, um, this instrument is very characteristically from Armenia. It's, a, it's an instrument that is very strongly associated with Armenian culture, Armenian history, Armenian music. And one of the most famous uh, songs on the Duduk um, is uh, an Armenian song called Hovren and Khan, which was uh, the song that inspired the, the song The Feeling Begins in, in the Last Temptation of Christ soundtrack and it's also uh, a song that I try to make an interpretation of on the song Silent and I thought that that would be a good way to end this video by playing uh, uh, another kind of interpretation of that song of that melody it's in a, in a maqam of course the Arabic modal system maqamat um, it's quite different from the Western modal system or scales, uh, but it's in a in a, a maqam in a mode called Hijaz, uh, which you could say is equivalent to the. It's the scale that's usually referred to as the Arabic scale. It's a scale that's very strongly associated with with the Middle East and Arabic culture, and in the Arabic uh, system of music, it's called Hijaz. Um, and so I'll end this video by playing. Uh, semi-improvisation in that maqam.
Thank you for watching.